folks, so we're in Wichita, Kansas today, and uh, I'm gonna be picking up a Chandler and Price 10 by 15 letterpress, but I brought the crane with me, and so this video, <clears throat> I'm a little out of breath, sorry, is about putting the crane together. So we're gonna switch to time lapse. Hey friends, so here's part two. Uh, like I said the other day, I'm buying a Challenger and Price 10 by 15 letterpress. Uh, this is a 1920 model. And so I'm gonna do the video of moving it and uh, just to help others out with how you actually move it. So I'm gonna switch to uh, time-lapse and let you guys watch that way. All right, so we've come off a time-lapse video, and I'm gonna adjust the camera a little bit. I'm having some technical difficulties. My, uh, tri my camera mount broke on me at the beginning of this. So first things first, if you do not know how to rig equipment or you're not comfortable lifting equipment, don't do it, hire somebody. Because you can lose a finger, a foot, you can break a leg, you can get very, very seriously injured, you can even kill yourself lifting stuff up. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. I'm comfortable and I'm working safely, so I don't have any problems doing this. You wanna, you wanna strap to a point that isn't gonna move and isn't gonna put any pressure on the press. On this press, it's the, it's the outer frame. That looks really good there. Now, are we pushing on anything that we shouldn't be pushing on? Um, and that, that can take pressure because it's a plot in the print. If you uh, if you'll roll this back out, I'll pull this. Uh... Yeah, 
yeah, that gives us just another half inch of clearance. But that looks really good there. And then what I'm thinking is maybe I can put a strap on this wheel to keep it steady. Yeah. When the last time I used these black straps were, they were in the bottom of something. I was like, yeah, they'll work. They're motorcycle straps in theory. Yeah. I wouldn't tie a motorcycle on them. Maybe a five gallon bucket. All right, so. This is typically where I get lots of comments in the video. The armchair experts come in and the work. Yeah. Snide comments appear here. I have them on now. Um, it's a fully moderated channel, so they can't post anything that I won't prove anyway, because I got tired of like luscious ladies from the Asian East posting their their wares. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That rod ain't going nowhere either. And we're not putting a lot of pressure on this. Yeah. As long as you're not twerking, yeah. All right, push the level. Yeah. It's a little looser than I'd like. It's just... Is that stripped or...? No, it's just loose. Do you want me to grab a wrench? No, I just hand tightened it. I mean, that's not really holding the press anyway. Uh, regular screws yeah so that I don't know if I have the tip for because uh, I want to drop those little runners do you have a, a yeah. tip okay. it's just just regular folks. yeah so we're not putting any pressure here and we've used the flywheel just to adjust it to level the press and um, you know that's the nice thing about this crane. If you're curious about the crane, there's a whole video series on how this was built. And it is the same crane that I used to lift the windmill. All right, so we decided to abandon the um, skids that were mounted to the press. Uh, a couple of lag bolts were loose, and they were giving us grief. So here we are. I told you this, this hoist would make short work out of this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, a little bit more this way. Yeah, I've never run. Yeah, well, and the real catch, and it's designed to be stored outside. Yeah. Uh, um, heavy duty steel. It's its failure mode is it would just come straight down. Uh, these are actually for little feet, so if I'm doing a heavy load, it'll flex those lower beams. So the little feet are designed to just sit under here and catch it. Uh, 
think. Uh, is it, uh, you want to go one more forward? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, this way? Well, my thought was that, uh, oh, okay, I thought you were on this back one here. No, we're probably good. I'm looking more at where the feet are landing. Yeah. That's what I was wanting to... Darn if I do, darn if I don't. I might you have could, to move. Uh, you could always pop this one up and push it in a little bit. Yeah. So why don't I do this? I'm going to pull it forward this way a little bit. That gets me in the center on this board back here. Yeah. And then I'm going to move the other one. gallery will have something to say at that point in the video as well. Oh, there's one guy that mounts them on skids and drags them up and down stairs and all sorts of stuff. Oh, yeah. And I think that's crazy. Clearly it works because, you know, he's moved a bunch of presses, but... Yeah. No, I always... I know guys that are like, that move them more than I do, and they're just like, Oh yeah, you can take it apart, get it through this door. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I tend to plan for unpleasantries, and then they don't happen. So I overdo everything. But well, the, uh... the guys that can just pop them apart. Like I, I have a lot of respect for them. Like, oh yeah. I don't want to be that guy. But I, <laughs> I look at it from the standpoint of this is really, really old. I don't even know if you could buy parts for it if you need to. Yeah, I mean, like, there's, they don't make them anymore. Yeah. And for that reason, it's just always good to leave it alone if you don't have to mess with it. There was one lady who restored one. She did a YouTube video. Yeah. She literally flipped it over and took it out. I, I think they gave it to her with the stipulation to have it come out. It was just she her and her mom. She did what? literally flipped it on its side because she wanted a piece of it and it broke something else and I was just like that's a travesty all right I'm gonna pull this back to get to these me where to put this one and I should have I should have realized this was going to be an issue because it was on the windmill too I don't know if I'm going to put this on four buys or two buys I'm actually sitting here thinking, you 
I have the crane. It's not like I can't just pick it up if I ever need to move it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think we're ready to land. And we're pretty much where I think it belongs. Part of the goal here is if it slid, and I'm going to lower this side first. process the way this works. Now is that not easier or what? have to happen the hard way.
yeah, I guess that's what we'll have to do is uh, mark it and then let's see what we can mark it with. Ah, screw it. Be able to get these bolts in here right. Well, that's another thing. Well, that's a lot tighter than I thought it would be. Are they because they're too big or? Oh, uh, they might just be junk in this one. I didn't want to do this last night because I had figured that this would be a three or four hour project to get this skidded and loaded. Oh yeah. And that's okay. I built in. I built in time. When I made the trailer reservation, they would only do it for three days. When I picked it up, I said, "Dude, it, I may not be able to get this back here by Sunday at nine. Well, it's supposed to be a two-day reservation. I said, "Absolutely not. It was three days." He said, well, "Oh, okay. I'll just put you down for Monday." Because <laughs> I said, well, "Well, can I drop it off?" At, uh, at, um, at night, and he's like, oh, no, no, don't do that. They'll steal it. I'm like, okay, well, I mean, you know, because I can definitely get it back Sunday night. this time <laughs> especially knowing that I have to put them back by hand so what I want to do is swing it back and start these I need to come this way about a quarter of an inch. There you go. Um, actually, why don't we pick up your side? It seems like it's dropping slowly. And I should call it. bought smaller bolts these are going to stick down but we'll work around them
got a, a uh, pry bar, we can always kind of ease it down. Okay. I don't know that, uh... Alright, that's exactly the right spot. Yeah, I've got this one over here. Well, it's just grease that's in there. It's just, you know, it's a hundred years of caked in grease. Yeah.
All right, so after a lot of magic and grunt work, it's done and loaded. And uh, strapped down quite nicely. This is why you skid them is so that, and you bolt them down to the skid. And uh, you wanna make sure it's, it's sort of centered on the trailer so that your center of gravity is, you want center mass just slightly forward to center line of the trailer. Uh, put a little bit more weight on the tongue. And uh, that's all there is to it. So next stop, Houston, Texas.